Hi, friends. This is Dory Clark, and this is our weekly Newsweek interview show, Better. And this week, I am here with Philip the Cat and also our special guest, Mark Goulston, MD. Mark is the author of the new book, Just Listen. And today, we're going to be talking about how to be a better listener. This is an often overlooked skill, but one of the most important that we have uh, in our in our present society, where so much of the emphasis is on saying things and so much is being blared at us, Mark is going to teach us a little bit more about the opposite, how we can be better at taking in information and building connections with people. Mark, so great to have you here. Well, it's, it's great to be here. And I'm going to start out like I start out a lot of shows and presentations. Uh, before the pandemic, I did a TEDx talk, what made you smile today? And I did it with a thousand Russians and they warned me, don't make them smile. And they all got up and I couldn't shut them up. I mean, they were just talking, they were laughing. And I said, I have to do a presentation. So what made you smile today, Dory? What made me smile today, Mark? Thank you. You know, I actually um, got up and worked out this morning. And that is, I would say that is always a goal, but it does not in fact always happen. So I was, I was smiling because I actually uh, accomplished what I what I set out to do. It's always nice when you can be the kind of person you want to be. So uh, I was I was feeling pretty pretty good, uh, you know, on on a roll starting uh, starting at seven in the morning. Well, part of our movement, which you can do, is whenever someone serves you, you know, a cashier, a TSA agent, you know, they have name tags, but they're treated like appliances. And so when someone serves you, you say their name, you introduce yourself, and you say, uh, uh, "Hi, Nancy." Uh, thank you. My name is Mark. I have a question for you. No, you're not in any trouble. What made you smile today? And I am telling you, especially now without the mask, they look up, they recall something, they look down and they smile at you. And it, it, it makes your day. Ah, oh, that's, that's such a great tip. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. And we want to welcome some of the great friends who are tuning in to this session from around the world. If you are joining us, please feel free to type into the chat box and let us know who you are and where you're tuning in from. And of course, we will be taking your questions for Mark Goulston as well. But we've got some awesome friends. We have Rosinda from Madrid joining us. We have uh, Cynthia in Los Angeles. We've got Karen from Boston. Jennifer's joining us. We have a LinkedIn friend from Saudi Arabia. We've got uh, a LinkedIn user from Paris. We've got uh, James joining us. We've got Richard from Kent, UK. Nathaniel, our frequent guest from Austin. We have uh, Chandra Sekaram joining us. We have James from Nigeria, Cheryl from Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, we have uh, all kinds of amazing folks, a LinkedIn friend from Kuwait, and many more. We're really glad to have you. So, Mark, a, a, a question I wanted to start out with. I know that you had an important mentor in your life. It was um, Professor Warren Bennis, who is kind of a, 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 a the, the now late uh, Warren Bennis, who is a legend in the world of management. And in fact, in my very first book, Reinventing You, I actually um, shared some stories about Warren Bennis. But I understand from talking to you that he actually really shaped your understanding of listening and how to listen well. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what Warren taught you? Well, David Gergen and Howard Schultz, who he, who he mentored, referred to Warren as a deep listener. And I was blessed to have him as a mentor. So we would get together. And one of the things that Warren would say is be more interested than interesting. Be more fascinated than fascinating. And when I was with him, he would make me feel more interesting. But he was the interesting guy. So there was one time when we were having uh, breakfast and I said, Warren, I'm going to listen to you. And he got a little nervous. I said, no, you're going to talk. He got a little nervous because he's a listener. I said, talk. And he talked. And after five minutes, he got so enthusiastic, he spit in my food. And he, and he saw that he spit in my food. And I saw it. And he stopped, stopped. And he said, Mark, I think I just sprayed your food. And I said, Warren, when I tell people that you're a mentor to me, they say, what's it like to be mentored by Warren Bennis? And I said, every time I'm with him, I try to take him into my DNA. And I think that helped. <laughs> That's amazing. Way to, way, to, way to turn it around. No, uh, no, no big deal spitting into food. That's, uh, that's really fun. 
Excellent. Well, we're here with Mark Goulston. He's the author of the book, Just Listen. And we're going to learn more about listening strategies, how to be a better listener. We also want to just say hi. We have Sophie joining us from San Francisco. We have Anna from Puglia, Italy. We have uh, Michelle from Auburn, California. Bana from India. We have Abir joining us. Uh, we have Andresa from Brazil. We have Alain joining us. We have Nasser from Syria. Stuart from Bradford, England. We have Maurizio from Dallas and many more. Uh, we love having all of you and type your questions into the chat box from Mark Goulston. So, Mark, I think, you know, when it comes to communicating now, I, I think, you know, just just to flip it a little bit, I know we're going to be talking about listening, but for a lot of people, uh, you know, it, it seems it seems so hard to get other people's attention in the world of smartphones and things like that. Everybody seems so distracted around us. What what would you advise to someone who is trying to get a message across? If you're on the other side of the equation, are there things that we can do that make it more likely that people will listen to us or that we actually can get our message across? So, so this is how you want to get attention. I have an article coming out, uh, so I'll give you a preview. It's on Newsweek. I'm in the expert forum, and it's called the UX trifecta, how to, how to connect with people. And uh, when you're in conversation, or you're doing a presentation, there's three things that they're listening for, and they don't even know that. They, uh, you want to be counterintuitive, the first thing, which means they're thinking, I never would have thought of that. So that intrigues them. The second thing they're listening for is something that's intuitively correct. You know, I think that would work. And then the third thing they're listening for is something that is relevant to them, relevant to a problem they're trying to solve and doable by them. So counterintuitive, intuitively correct, relevant, and something that they can do. And I wanted to shift into something because I gave a talk to a thousand Russians <clears throat> uh, and my focus, and I share this with everyone because if you do this, and I'm going to do a quick exercise with you, it will fundamentally change all your conversations. If you can realize that when you're with people who are listening to you, underneath that they are listening for something. And if you can just be curious what they're listening for and let go of your agenda. So being curious about what someone's listening for with what we call a beginner's mind, people will lean into. And I want to try an experiment with you. And I know you're managing things. So, so lean into this a little bit. So you're, you're listening to me, you're checking boxes, you're making sure that we uh, you know, give good information. But if I were to tune into what I think you're listening for and try this on, I think you want to honor the trust and confidence that your viewers have in you. You don't take it lightly. And one of the things you're listening for is something that would be a good use of their time. And you're also listening for People who are guests, they may be best-selling authors, but they're awful, and you're looking to protect your people from wasting their time because they're giving you their, the, the gift of their time from all around the world, the gift of their trust, confidence, respect, and admiration, and you got it all going for you. I think that matters to you, and you're listening for a way to honor it. Is that true? I think that's that's right on, Mark. Absolutely, yes. You do, people people don't want to come back if uh, if the guests are boring or if the information is not useful. Uh, so I, I think you've you've honed in uh, quite well on that. Yes. And, and so, if you're listening in, try this today. Try this with any conversation you're having. Uh, if it if it feels like it's going sideways. And I do a presentation to an accelerator every three months to 20 startups about how to pitch investors. I say, if a conversation is going sideways, what it means is the beginning of the conversation, they were listening for something and you missed it. So when your gut says it's going sideways, don't up, the, uh, don't up it by trying to push more. Say, can we pause? And they're going to uh, they're going to be startled and say, I think you were listening for something when we began and you didn't hear it, and I have a feeling we've gotten further away from it, what were you listening for? Because maybe we have time to bring it back. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's really interesting. Thank you for sharing that. That's great. 
Love it. We've been here with Mark Goulston. You can learn more about Mark and his work. Just go to markgoulston.com. His new book is called Just Listen. And we're learning how we can be better listeners. And speaking of which, if you're enjoying this conversation and you want to learn more, if you want to make sure that you listen every week, we're here every Thursday at 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Just go to doryclark.com. You can sign up for my email list there. You'll get reminders about great conversations like this one with Mark. And Mark, a great question actually came in from from Cynthia in Los Angeles. And she's curious, she says, being able to stay tuned in on my third Zoom meeting of the day is challenging, you know, much, much less, you know, by the time we get to Zoom meeting number eight of the day, which I think a lot of us have, um, what, is, what is your advice for people who are just burned out on digital communications? Any tips you can share? Well, I love my mentors. And so I'll give you another Warrenism. Uh, uh, and one of my favorite quotes from Warren is, uh, and take this in, boredom occurs when we fail to make the other person interesting. Boredom occurs when we fail to make the other person interesting. And a lot of times we're bored because nobody's connected to what they're saying. And you can shift on a Zoom call. You can actually try the exercise I suggested. You could say, you know, I have a sense that all of us are suffering from Zoom fatigue. When you came into this conversation, what were you looking for, listening for? And maybe we can bring that into the conversation so it's a good use of your time. Uh, something that I suggest if you're conducting meetings also uh, uh, is at the beginning, say, I have an exercise. I want all of you, all of us to leave this meeting saying that was the best meeting we have had in months. It, could you type in the chat what happens between now and the end of the meeting? So you leave and say, that was the best meeting I've been to in months. And please don't use other people's names. You know, we, we want to respect uh, confidentiality. Uh, you don't want to say, well, uh, thanks for not letting so-and-so uh, blab and use up all the airspace. That's a great point. Thank you very much, Mark Goulston. If you're enjoying this conversation, please hit the like button and hit the share button so that your friends can benefit from it as well. We're talking about how to become better listeners. And we want to say hi. Speaking of listeners tuning in, we want to say hi to David in Barcelona. We've got Alexandra joining us from Switzerland. We have Umar from Kashmir. We've got Donald from Boston. Samia is joining us from Utah. Uh, we have a LinkedIn friend from Houston. We have on uh, Anna Claire from uh Paris. We have Jacqueline from Taiwan. We've got Jessica from British Columbia. Kristen's joining us from Philly. We have Ika from Madrid. We have Phaedra from New York. Hi. We have Susanna from, uh, from Ireland. We have Henry from Oakland. Annette from the Midlands in the UK. And Todd joining us from New York. We love having all of you type your questions for Dr. Mark Goulston. He's a psychiatrist and an executive coach and an author into the chat box. Now, Mark, something that I'm curious about, I think probably a lot of us, you know, we want to be better listeners, and we especially want the people that we're engaging with to know that we're listening. Are there strategies that we can use so that we can demonstrate it, you know, not in sort of like a fake performative way, but how can we really get it across to the other person that, yes, I'm listening, I'm paying attention, I'm here with you? What, what would be the strategies that you would suggest? So something I talk about in Just Listen is that there are four levels of talking and there are four levels of listening and they go along with each other. The worst kind of talking is talking over people. And what that triggers in pe people is removed listening. If you're talking over them, they feel insulted. They want to pull away. Uh, if you're talking over them at a conference, they're not going to come back after the break. The second level is talking at people and people feel the, that you're being confrontational and they often respond with reactive listening, which means uh, uh, they'll look at you like, you can't talk at me that way. The third level is talking to people, and that's business as usual. And that's, that's kind of what we expect at the very least. And that goes along with what we call responsible listening. Well, you're talking to me, I'll be responsible and listen. Uh, the fourth level, though, is the deepest, is when you talk with people. And when you talk with people, the deepest level is receptive listening in which they invite you to talk more. And you can tell what you're doing by the body language of the other person. When you're talking over them, they, lo they feel insulted. Uh, when you're talking at them, they'll either hunker down because they're feeling like you're bullying them or they'll stick their chin out at you as if you're 
uh, as if you're disrespecting them. When you're talking to people, they'll nod from the neck up, kind of like you're doing, and you know we're talking to each other. And but when you talk with people, they'll lower their shoulders because they feel you're inviting them into a more intimate conversation and they relax. And that's the gold standard. And I cover a lot of that and just listen. Uh, really good points. Thank you. We're here with Mark Goulston, MD. He is the author of the book, Just Listen. And if you want to learn more about Mark, just go to his website. You can check it out at markgoulston.com. We're talking about how to be a better listener. And we want to say hi to amazing friends joining us. Dominic's here from Stuttgart. Nafis is here from Kolkata. Tomas from uh, Maryland. We've got Julia from Angola. We have Hetty from Philadelphia. We've got uh, Mohammed from, uh, uh, or Abbas from uh, Pakistan. We have Adrian from South Africa. Uh, we love having all of you guys, including Catherine from Indonesia. This is fantastic. And a, a great question um, came in, Mark, that I, I wanted to make sure to get to from Wade. And Wade is curious, what approach do you recommend when you're talking with someone whose default mode is always thinking of what to say next? We're trying to talk to them. We're trying to get through. And yet we know that they're, they're just they're not present, right? They're they're thinking about their own script. Maybe they're being defensive. Maybe they're just nervous and, oh, I got to think about all of that. But it is not getting through. How do we deal with it when we're in a situation like that? Well, this may not work in certain cultures, but there's something I call assertive humility, assertive humility. And what you say to the person is you could say, can we pause for a second because I need your help with something? And they're going to go, what? And so you want to give them a chance to say, what's that about? But when you say, I need your help with something, uh, and you don't say it in a whining way, it's assertive. I need your help with something. What? Uh, I find myself becoming distracted as you're talking. And I need your help because if I continue to be distracted, it's going to take away my motivation to spend a lot of time with you. And you have so much to offer. I don't want to default to that. Um, and I need your help. And I think I become distracted because sometimes you'll talk about things and you'll go on and on. Something I will share with you that Marty Nemco, a great career coach from NPR, shared with me when I was on his show and Just Listen came out. He said, you know, Mark, for a guy who wrote a book on listening, you stink. He said, you need to apply the traffic light rule. And, uh, and I wrote a blog for Harvard Business Review, How to Tell If You're Talking Too Much. It was the most read blog of the week. And the traffic light rule is when you're talking with someone or you're having a conversation and they haven't invited you to do a presentation, you're sort of inviting me so I can go on and on. But if it's a regular conversation, you have 20 seconds before the green light turns to yellow. You have another 20 seconds before the yellow light turns to red. And at 40 seconds, you've worn out your welcome. And here's the problem the 40 seconds feels like five seconds because you're getting stuff off your chest. You're feeling great. You're not even checking whether they're listening to you because you're just getting talking and talking and talking. But I have found the traffic light rule to be really invaluable to me and I need to use it more, Dory. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. I love the traffic right, light rule, Mark. That's uh, a really a really good tip. Thank you very much for sharing that. We're here with Mark Goulston. He is the author of the book, Just Listen. And I'm Dory Clark. We're here with Newsweek's weekly interview show, Better. We're talking about how we can become better listeners. That's one of the most valuable skills that, uh, that we can all be cultivating. We have amazing friends tuning in uh, from all over, and we want to say hi to them. We have Servan from uh, Istanbul. We have uh, uh, Jose joining us from Brazil. We love having you. Danielle also from Brazil. Wendy's in New Haven. Nancy's in Dublin. Jules is from Orange County. And Lucy's in Stockholm. Welcome to all of you. And type your questions for Mark Goulston into the chat box. Our friend Adnan in Turkey had a question, Mark. Um, Adnan wants to know, speak less and listen more. It's easy to say. We all support the goal. But he wants to know, if you if you just, you're sitting there, you're listening and uh, you want to speak. How do you fight it? How do you fight that impulse when it seems so strong in the moment? Uh, what would you suggest? So here's a killer question. It will change your relationships. And many of you are going to say, I'm afraid to do that. Uh, select someone that you want to have a close relationship with, or, or you're in a close relationship and say, um, I have a question for you. Have I ever made you feel that you weren't worth my undivided attention and interest? And they're going to go, what? 
And you say, have I ever made you feel that you're not worth my undivided attention and interest? And they may start to cry because you may do that a lot. And if they do that, this is an opportunity for intimacy. And you say, at my worst, how bad can I be at that? That's inviting them to get stuff off their chest. And then say, take me to the last time I did that. And when they do that, they're going to be refeeling something that they tucked away, which could lead to resentment if you don't change the way you and they communicate. And when they share that, they may be tearing up because you invited them to do this. And then you say, look at me. And when they look at you, you say, you deserve better. I'm going to fix this. And I'm sorry. It'll, Whoa. You're, you're just going, going for the jugular, Mark. That's, oh, that's going to get them. That's, that's very powerful. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, I, I wanted to share another anecdote and we can take more questions. Uh, I was blessed to have eight mentors. They've all died. The last one was Larry King. And this is an example of when you don't want to listen so deeply. So I was part of a breakfast group with uh, Larry and we met every morning. It got him out of bed, got me out of bed and we would meet. It was going on for 21 years. And I was one of the last members, which means I paid once, uh, once a week, wherever we went. And I remember they would banter. They would banter about politics. They would banter about the Dodgers. They would banter, banter, banter. And Larry would look at me and he would, and because I would listen deeply and I, I, I'm not great at bantering. And he said to me, you're so morose. He said, what are you listening for? And I said, I said, you're so I said, well, you know, I'm not really into the Dodgers and uh, I find it interesting, but I don't want to bring people down. So I'm happy to not come. He said, no, no, no. We need Dr. Morose because we get <laughs> we get so hyper. We need Dr. Morose. And uh, he was on my podcast, my wake up call, episode 81. And uh, and, you know, and, and I was he, I have the superstar on and he says it's a great episode. He says, you're having a conference. People are having too much fun. They're enjoying themselves. You got to invite Dr. Morose to speak. He can take the energy out of a room. He can suck it right out of there for you. So you got to hire him. But I have to share an intimate moment. Uh, he had many illnesses. And uh, uh, and I, at, towards the end of his life, I hypnotized him so he would eat. And I went to, I went to his, uh, where he lived, and I hypnotized him. And I had this feeling that I wasn't gonna see him again in person. Uh, and I didn't see him again in person. And after I hypnotized him, he wakes up and I'm walking out of the room and I look at him and I said, Larry, I have something to tell you. And he had a you know gruff Brooklyn accent, what? I said, I love you, Larry. And then he looks at me, he says, I love you, Morose. <laughs> and so how often do you get that to be a last conversation with someone you know, that you see in person? So, uh, uh, and my wife tells me, you know, Mark, sometimes you listen so intently, you know, you make people nervous, you know, because, well, because I, I like to listen and I also like to listen to what people uh, are thinking underneath. That's why, that's why if you try the exercise, the one takeaway from this that I'd like you to try is in conversations you're having uh, or even presentations, uh, uh, if it feels like it's going sideways, pause, don't get nervous and say, you were listening for something and we're not talking about it. What were you listening for? And you have a chance to save it. Yeah, so good. I, I love it. And uh, to to be lovingly dissed by, by Larry King so, does sound like a, a life highlight. So thank you for sharing that, Mark. That's really fun. We want to say hi to some of the great folks tuning in. We have a LinkedIn friend from Covington, Georgia. Diane is here from South Carolina. We've got uh, Fidei or Fidi, perhaps, from the Netherlands. We have Ekta from Toronto. Daniel's here from Bogota. We've got Giannis from Mykonos. And we have Alexander from Uruguay. We love having all of you. This is wonderful. And a great question came in uh, for our guest, Mark Gould. You can learn more at markgoulston.com uh, from Prashant. And Prashant is, is actually got a, uh, an interesting question. He says, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're talking, 
you don't necessarily want to be so emotionally focused on the other person's reaction. If, you know, they're they're listening, um, but you know, how do we how do we balance this, right? If I'm talking, how can I stay focused and not lean in too much, trying to understand the recipient? Um, what do you what do you think about that? How do we make sure that we're 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 clued in and sort of listening for their responses, but not so much that we get thrown off. How would you handle that, Mark? Well, when I coach leaders about presenting to their teams, what I say is, is if you can talk about the mission and the purpose of your company or your own, uh, you're really enlisting them to join you. Uh, so if you're not, uh, puffing yourself up, but you're talking about something that really matters to you and that we, we need to do this, uh, people will be drawn to you. But if it's if you're talking all about yourself and bragging, uh, people are going to be offended by that and you might want to watch that. And, and it's interesting. I remember I went to an all-women's conference and a friend of mine uh, was leading it. And there was something that bothered me. Uh, that, uh, there was a about 150 women and five men in the audience. And Lisa Leslie from the WNBA was up on the panel with her partner, business partner. And I realized something and, uh, and my, this mentor mentee of mine was running the conference. I raised my hand. It was the last panel of the day. And I said, I, and when I raised my hand, she said, Oh, it's my mentor. It's Dr. Mark. Come on up here. So I go up there and I said something and this could be a little dicey. I said, I'm going to say something that is not meant to offend gender, not, but it may. Something that I've noticed that uh, can help, that can cause women to be less successful is too many women have what I call anticipatory pushback, which means they're so used to being talked down to, marginalized, talked over, that when they talk, even before the other person speaks, they're anticipating it. And when you anticipate someone's going to slam you, your voice gets pitchy. And when it gets pitchy, it communicates anxiety. And I went up there and I said, the reason I'm coming up here is because Lisa Leslie's uh, partner here, Bridget, I'm forgetting her last name. You've never had problems in your entire career. Is that true? She said, yeah, I don't get it. I don't get why women have problems. I, and then I looked at her. I said, former military, right? She said, yeah. And I said, here's what I learned from watching Bridget. And if you're listening in and you want to be taken seriously, I said, what Bridget does, and she's looking at me like, who are you? I said, what Bridget does is when she enters a room, she is all about solving the, the problem to be solved. When she steps in, she's neither male or female. It's like, where are we? What do we got to solve? Where are we with that? Uh, who's doing what? What's the next step? Uh, how, have they, how have things been working out? What do we need to change? And then going forward, who's going to do what? Uh, and then report back to us at our next, next meeting. And I looked at her, I said, she said, how did you know that? I said, because when you focus on the problem to be solved as opposed to you being the problem. People are drawn to that. And so if you're listening in, whether you're male or female uh, or uh, LGBT or, or whatever your preference, if you step into situations focused on being curious, what's the problem we need to solve, uh, that we need to solve quickly, where are we with that? People will be drawn to that such powerful advice. That is great information from Mark Goulston. Mark is the author of Just Listen. You can check it out. You can get the book and learn more about Mark and his work at markgoulston.com. I'm Dory Clark, and this has been Better, a weekly Newsweek interview show. You can tune in every Thursday at 9 Pacific, 12 Eastern. Mark Goulston, thank you so much for joining us. Well, you, you make me want to be better. I love it. Thank you so much. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you next week.